Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is for educational purpose only. May the four victims rest in peace, condolence to the families, and may the correct justice be served. Please like, share, and subscribe. As the coroner told him, the killer's rampage started on the third floor, where both Maddie and Kaylee had their bedrooms. Christy thinks he wasn't expecting to find the two friends together in the same bed. This is for fair use purpose. This is from 48 hours. I find this interesting because Steve Congalvis, Kaylee's father, said clearly that before the gag orders was put on, The coroner told him that the killings and alivings started from the third flu. So if it started from the third flu, wouldn't have the other roommates, the surviving roommates, Zana and E have heard all the rummaging upstairs? So my question is, was Maddie or Kaylee, or were both of them the t targets? Because if it was the second floor the targets were in, they would have gone directly into Zana's room. Into the affidavit, which outlines law enforcement's investigation, the bodies of Zana and Ethan who was sleeping over, were found in or near her bedroom on the second floor. So we heard that clearly, that the bodies of Zan and E were found in or near Zana's bedroom. And that has been mentioned a lot of times. I don't think E made it to the bedroom. Something must have happened to him in the corridor because I showed you all the forensics taking pictures of the corridor. Could it be possible that he was running to warn Zano? Maybe to lock her door? I do agree with Kaylee's mother that I don't believe Kaylee was sleeping with Maddie in a single bed. I believe that Kaylee was sleeping in her own room with her dog Murphy when she heard maybe Maddie yelling or struggling and she must have come in to see what was going on. And the suspect could have thrown her on the bed where she was trapped. told her the exact time Kaylee and Maddie were dropped off at their house on King Road, 1.56 a.m., a timeline she says she confirmed before the police, but he didn't answer. Kaylee made a call to her boyfriend at 2.56 a.m., but he didn't answer. I find this to be very interesting. Kaylee made a last call to Jack D., her ex-boyfriend, at 1.56, because clearly, sorry, at 2.56, we clearly heard on the body cam of the police in the banfield, at 2.56, we could hear a female yelling, stop it, stop. Did something happen to the girls after the final call they made to Jack D? Could that be possible? Is say stop. Now who that is, I have no idea. Very carefully, listen to it again on replay. And then you know, I'm gonna listen. I don't want to know about you know, I'll start it. And then you know, I'm gonna listen. I don't want to know about you know, I'll start it. And then you know, I'm gonna listen. I don't want to. Okay, now this 
Stop it, stop. That was at 2.56 and a couple of seconds, I believe 15 seconds. Why would somebody be yelling, stop it, stop? And let's not forget the Banfield isn't far from 1122 Kings Road. At 3.16, we saw four to five figures running. All of this can't be coincidence. There has to be some kind of explanation for so many things to be lined in to these horrific murders. And I would love to know what these three young gentlemen threw at the field. Because the police clearly told them to stop. The officer put on his torch. But these three young men continued going quickly trying to cross the field. The question is, what did they throw in the field? Because we didn't see the officers going after the direction they went. And it's a known fact, no matter whatever situation, if anyone walks away from the police, they definitely have something to hide. I don't believe when people say that they walked away from the police because they were scared of the police and these are young boys intoxicated. Absolutely not. Because no matter how intoxicated you are, you know when the law enforcement tells you to stop, you have to stop. What did they throw in the field? What was Saeed watching at the band field? Were these people watching something from a live stream, maybe in the dark web? Allegedly, just a thought. Were they in some kind of Snapchat group where they had access to be watching these horrific crimes? Now that Brian Christopher Koberger's alib alibi may be legit, you think we got a big problem here. This is a major problem. Were these other people investigated or were they integrated by the police over the phone? Like we've heard. We know that Jack S. left. He drove allegedly to his parents' cabin in Boise, Idaho. And even if this case is moved to Boise, Idaho, I wonder if these four victims are going to get the correct justice. This picture bothers me because if you look towards the shop window, you can see David Lear. David Lodge and his two friends turning their back towards Maddie Cayley and Jack Shawalto when they walked in to the grub truck. You can see them on the above picture at the corner. All three of them have their backs turned. Well, did they come for mission? Was the grub truck where they were surveilling these girls. Because let's not forget, Walter said, you know, the, you know we are going to get you for that Maddie. What did Maddie do? Because right after Walter said, you know we're going to get you for that Maddie, that is when Kaylee asks his Maddie, Maddie, what did you tell Adam? In a stressful voice. And Maddie said, I told Adam everything. What was sold to Adam? What is Adam hiding? Is this a cover-up? Is it the fraternities and sororities who were involved? Allegedly. Pay attention to the above picture and watch when the girls and show all to walk in. Pay attention to David Lodge with the black jacket the yellow hoodie, and his two bodies. There's a lot of fishy behavior going on at the grub truck. Yeah, he turned, and there they walk in. Obviously, he didn't want them to see that he was waiting for them, I guess. Look at Walter. That's the only time he takes off his cap. He puts it back on.
Why did they turn their backs towards a grub truck? You only do that when you're hiding from something. Pay attention to number nine on the below picture to the left hand side. This is right after he spoke to Maddie. He, t he shows number eight the sign that he's going to put someone to sleep. And that definitely had to be Maddie. Because as soon as Maddie walks in, he waves at her, she comes towards him, she gives him a hug, she says something in his ear, and as soon as she turns to walk towards Kaylee is when number nine is giving the sign. How come the toxicological reports are negative? That's impossible. May they rest in peace, but the girls were over the alcohol limit. They were intoxicated, and number nine could have easily drugged them. We saw number nine putting something in Kaylee's mouth, at least I did, and many people do agree with that. So what was actually going on here? And I really believe that something was put in Maddie's drink and put in her mouth. Because we've never heard that Maddie had defensive wounds. We've never heard that. It's always talk about Kaylee, that her parents had defended herself, and we've heard that Zana defended herself. We've never heard anything about Maddie. Is this the time Maddie told Adam something? We can see Adam sitting here, and Maddie and Kaylee are talking to Jack D. What was told to them? What was told to Adam that could have got them unalived? The quadruple murders break through. Police zero in on University of Idaho reserve officers training cops for possible Rambo-style knife. I wonder what they found there. I don't think we need to go far. Jack Showalter loves playing with knives, allegedly. We've seen him hunting at the age of 15. So when you start hunting at such a young age, you definitely have skills to use a knife. This case wasn't handled well from the beginning, unless they were trying to cover it up for the fraternities and the sororities. Allegedly. That's just strictly my opinion. What do you think of when you hear crime or passion? I automatically think about revenge, jealousy, etc. Was this a crime of passion? To start with, it was a targeted crime. Who could have been jealous here? Jack D? Possibly. The reason I say that is the victim's spouse or partner is always looked at. Jack D was one of the last people to be ruled out. Strangely enough, Maddie and Kaylee called him 10 times before the unalivings. Could Jack D have been upset that Kaylee was leaving him with Murphy? Could that be the reason that Murphy wasn't touched? Because I don't buy that BK wouldn't have unlived a dog because of the principles he has against unaliving animals. You have to keep in mind that when you come with such a sick thought, whoever came with this thought and came into a house where they know it's a, ho a house full of people, it's a party venue. So if a person took that bold chance to come into the house and do a quadruple murder and just say there was a stranger like BK, why would they leave the dog? The dog would bark and draw attention to the neighbors and to the police and everyone. So I think the dog was spared because it's someone who really knows the dog well. Maybe Adam, Jack D., 
the Sigma Chi boys, Hunter. There's so many people who need the dog. And the dog is a big clue here. And that's the reason I believe Kaylee was sleeping in her room. She wouldn't have left, let her dog, Murphy, sleep alone in the room in case Murphy barks. They're not allowed to have pets in the house. So I think Kaylee definitely heard something in Maddie's room. Let's not forget, DM heard Romaging upstairs. And Kaylee's just the next door to Maddie. There's only the bathroom between them. So she would have heard clearly if Maddie was yelling and crying out for help. Let's see what Alivira or Olivia, Kaylee's sister, had to say. Because don't forget, Kaylee's sister was the one who went to the neighbors and she saw the camera. This was before all these things went into gag order. And she said that she saw Maddie and Kaylee coming home. They did everything right. They took the body right to be safe. They took the dog out to party. That's really important because they could have been attacked when they took the dog out. Or somebody could have come in. System. They went out together. They Ubered out. They stopped and got food. They Ubered home. They let their dog out to go potty. And then they locked their house up. Everything right. It happened. Gonzalez's sister, Olivia, who described the last night of the students' lives. My sisters did everything right. They went out in the buddy system. They went out together. They Ubered out. They stopped and got food. They Ubered home. They let their dog out to go potty. And then they locked their house up. They Ubered home on the buddy ride. They let the dog out to potty. And they locked the doors. She saw all this in the camera. The neighbor's camera. So if they locked the doors, was the sliding door left open or most likely it's because many people have the code for the front door I don't think BK has the code to the front door it has to be people from the fraternities Hunter and his girlfriend Emily were there in the house very often we saw even Emma Belly in the house so I believe somebody some of the people who came, the suspects, I never say suspect because I believe it's more than one, but that's strictly my opinion. I always believe that the fraternity boys, especially the Sigma Chi, were behind it. I said that from day one. And it's due to the cause of the 4chan article. I can't get over that article. I know it's enormous, but somebody wanted them to get caught. It could have been anyone. It could have been E's brother Hunter. It could have been friends of E and Zano. They wanted justice for their friends. Why was Murphy saved? It's because somebody really loves Murphy besides Kaylee. Now this was on NBC News in the big name. Five days later and investigators are still finding evidence. Now how unprofessional is that? That shows they didn't do a thorough investigation. Sorry to say that but that's the truth. How can they be finding evidence five days later? And let's not forget, it started snowing. The floor was wet. Evidence could have been easily tampered with. And if they found a few evidence five days later, imagine, imagine how many other evidence was cleaned up. For all you know, the weapon could have been lying somewhere there. Somebody could have dropped it and come and taken it back. The forensics was dusting this little window next to the sliding door. Is that where 
the suspect or suspects came in from? Or they could have possibly touched that window without gloves. This is what somebody put up who's, who studied in that university and who allegedly knows one of the corners. What I know to be true. Jagdeep's suspect number one for Ellie at this moment and has been since day one. The fact that they cleared him is a common tactic used by Ellie to throw off both the public and the suspect. Kaylee's family was likely instructed to vouch for him. Law enforcement believes that Jack D either committed this crime or hired someone to do it. Law enforcement is puzzled by the fact that Maddie's body was mutilated. Trigger warning, the worst, most wound and the only one to partially be decapitated. Law enforcement is building a case to arrest Jack D and they are trying to determine why he was so aggressive with Maddie and less so with Kaylee. He was found laying in the doorway of Zana's room. And we heard that from the 48 hours too that Zana and E were found either inside the room or out near the room. So the corridor is obviously near the room. He was the second to last one to be killed before the killer likely striked Zana. So this is someone I believe who was really out for Maddie and Kaylee because we heard what was said when Jack Schwalter was walking with the girls. He said, we are going to get you for that, Maddie. We are going to get you for that, Maddie. What does he mean? That's the time Maddie was asked by Kaylee, what did he tell Adam? And she said, I told Adam everything. So we heard Jack Schwalter saying that. We're going to get you for that, Maddie. Is that the reason Maddie could have been injured so badly? Was this a crime of passion? Could it be that Jack D was upset or believed that Maddie had a big influence in Kaylee's life? Because Kaylee broke up with Jack D. Brian is not the only one with bushy eyebrows. Saeed wasn't far from the premises. And the other young gentleman, the tall guy at Banfield, had bushy eyebrows too. Why was these people sending each other Venmos? Were they betting on something? Saeed S. Paid David Beracho on November 13th. Said S. charged Jackson Gustavin. He's from the Sigma Chi. Said S. paid David Beracho again. We had that Jack K. and his sister passing around Venmo too. What was going on? David B. with the glasses was busy talking to people on social media. And when they confronted him with the 4chan article, he said not everything in the 4chan article is true. So I wonder what is true then. Because he did not deny that some things were correct. That is the reason I always pay attention to the, pay attention to the fraternities especially the Sigma Chi boys. Because Dylan heard her amazing upstairs and she taught it to the Sigma Chi boys. We know that David B and David L allegedly had a fight with E that night and Zana. We know that David Lodge is, sup is supposed to be on steroids, trigger warning, that is some serious drugs to be taken. Makes people aggressive, they enrage. And imagine 
These young people are popping pills and drinking like no man's business. So we can expect anything to happen. I'm not saying they did it, but I'm saying something isn't right here. We clearly saw David Lodge at the grub truck with the two other fellows churning his back where Maddie and Kaylee walked in. Look at him sitting on the leather sofa that belonged to the, the victims. This was the sofa that was out near the sliding door. He's sitting there and he must be planning this vicious crimes, allegedly. Why else would he be sitting there? They weren't friends. It was mentioned in the 4chan that he couldn't stand all four victims. Kaylee wasn't supposed to be there. She was called collateral damage, according to them. So when they talk about crime or passion, could the Davids have been jealous? They could have been upset, rage, steroids involved, allegedly. All this makes sense for motive, targets. And the alibi was perfect. We saw four figures running. They said they would put their phones at home on YouTube, pretending that they're on YouTube. All these people have gotten away with a horrific crime, I believe. Crimes. Trigger warning. Look at this picture. This is from David B., the guy with the glasses on top from Sigma Chi. It's social media. He seems to be really obsessed with death. May the correct justice be served. Please like, share and subscribe.